Hello, my fellow minor league nerds, and welcome to part three of our look at the history of professional baseball in Anderson, South Carolina. If you've not watched the first two parts yet, I would recommend doing that before watching this one. In this episode, we're going to cover the history from 1974 to 2007. So sit back, relax, and let's learn some history. For the 1974 season, the New York Mets would come to town with the Anderson Ball Club adopting their name, becoming the Anderson Mets. Just like the previous clubs that played at Anderson Memorial Stadium, the Anderson Mets were a subpar team, finishing in fifth place of the six-team league with a 61-72 and record. Though, three players would see time in MLB. Pitcher Randy Tate, who started 25 games for the Anderson Mets, spent all of the 1975 season in New York in what would be his only season in the show. He went 5-13 with a 4.43 ERA in six games, including 23 starts. Catcher Luis Rosado would have 32 plate appearances and 11 games for the Mets in 1977, and 1980. The player who'd have the most success would be the Mets' 1973 first-round draft choice, Lee Mazzilli, who would make his debut in 1976. He would have a 14-year playing career, earning an All-Star selection in 1979 and a World Series ring in 1986 during his second stint with the Mets. He would win a second ring in 2000 as a member of the Yankees coaching staff and would then manage the Baltimore Orioles in 2004 and 2005. In September of 1974, the owners of the Anderson Mets, Community Sports Inc., informed their parent club they would not operate the team in 1975, bringing an end to the franchise that began as the Anderson Senators in 1970. It looked as if Anderson Memorial Stadium would go without a team for the first time since it opened. But that did not happen as Fred Nichols, who owned the Gastonia Rangers, would bring his team to town. The Texas Rangers, who were the parent club of the Gastonia Rangers, were not happy with Sims Legion Park, specifically the lighting. So they pressured Nichols to find a new home. With Anderson Memorial Field becoming available, he relocated them there, naming them the Anderson Rangers. At this point, the Western Carolinas League was not in good shape, having dwindled down to just four teams after the Anderson Mets and the Orangeburg Dodgers each folded following the 1974 season. Most Rangers players would be filtered out of the system long before coming close to making it to the majors, though four players did make it to the show. The most successful would be starting pitcher Jim Clancy, who was 19 years old in 1975. He would go 6-13 and with a 3.83 ERA in 23 appearances for Anderson, making his major league debut with the Toronto Blue Jays in 1977. He would have a 15-year career, mostly with the Blue Jays, being named an All-Star in 1982. Others who made it to the show include Jeff Bird, who would also make his debut with the Blue Jays. He would have 17 appearances, going 2-13 and 13 in his only big league season. Rick Lissy would have 20 plate appearances in 9 games for the 1981 Texas Rangers. The last Anderson Ranger to make it to the big leagues would be first baseman Gary Gray, who had 663 plate appearances in 211 games during his six-season career with the Texas Rangers, the Cleveland Indians, and the Seattle Mariners. The pitching coach for the Rangers that year was Singin' Ed Nodal, who was a colorful character. He was a career minor leaguer who became a manager in both affiliated and independent ball. At the age of 35, 
he appeared in two games for the Anderson Rangers, pitching garbage innings for the team. He was given the nickname of Singin' because of his habit of singing Rat Pack standards. He would even release an album in 1983 titled To Baseball With Love. Between 1978 and 2008, he would manage six affiliated clubs as well as four independent teams in the Northern League, the Northeastern League, the Can-Am League, and the American Association. 2010 was his 50th season in baseball. He spent the year as a coach for the Brockton Rocks of the Can-Am League. He is famous for doing charitable work in both the United States and Canada, raising millions of dollars for various charities, mainly focusing on children. Like the previous teams in Anderson, the Rangers only stayed for one season, finishing 67 and 70, drawing only 25,591 fans. After 1975, Fred Nichols would move his team to the recently vacated McCormick Field in Asheville, North Carolina. The Asheville Orioles had left for Charlotte after the season, becoming the Charlotte O's. In Asheville, Nichols would rename his team to the one that has been used off and on by teams in the city since 1916, the Tourists, and that is what they are known as today as members of the High A South Atlantic League. Anderson would go four seasons without a team. Before the 1980 season, the Atlanta Braves would move their Western Carolinas League affiliate in the newly renamed South Atlantic League from Greenwood, South Carolina, where they had played since 1968, to Anderson, retaining their parent club's name, becoming the Anderson Braves. They were never successful during their time playing at Anderson Memorial Stadium. They never made the postseason and only had one winning season, finishing 72-70 in 1982. Their best attended season was their first, when 40,836 came out, dropping to only 24,935 by their last season in 1984. 17 Anderson Braves would see time in the major leagues, with the most successful being outfielder Brett Butler, who played in Anderson in 1980, going on to enjoy a 17-year career for five different teams. Outfielder Brooke Jacoby, who played 12 seasons in the U.S. and Japan, also played in Anderson in 1980. Pitcher Zane Smith in 1982, who played 13 big league seasons for five teams. Canadian Hall of Fame pitcher Dwayne Ward played in Anderson in 1982 before embarking on a 10-year big league career, mostly with the Toronto Blue Jays, where he won two World Series titles. And second baseman Ron Gant, who played in Anderson in 1984 before starting his 16-season career with nine different teams. He was the last active member of the Anderson Braves, playing in his last MLB game for Oakland on May 25, 2003. Pitcher Tom Waddell, who played three seasons with the Cleveland Indians in 1984, 1985, and 1987, played in Anderson in 1981 and 1982. He was one of only eight Scottish natives to ever play in Major League Baseball. Anderson, South Carolina would never see another affiliated team, but professional baseball would return in 2007 with the Anderson Joes, who took their name from Shoeless Joe Jackson, who grew up in the area. They played in the South Coast League and finished with an overall record of 37 and 52. The Joes and the entire league would fold after that one season. Anderson Memorial Stadium still stands today and has been home of the Anderson University Trojans baseball team since 1985. In the 28 years Anderson hosted pro ball, they only saw one pennant in 1912 and eight winning seasons. Well, my fellow minor league nerds, that'll do it for a look at the history of professional baseball in Anderson, South Carolina. 
I do hope you enjoyed the series and learned something new. And until next time, take care and remember to always support minor league baseball and never stop learning about minor league baseball history. This podcast is part of the Curved Brim Media Network. Here are some of the other members of Curved Brim Media. Hi, this is Ed Rivera of the Data Chronicles. Join me as I interview people just like you and players, coaches, GMs on the path that led you to become a fan of the sport. I'm Paul Caputo, and on the Baseball by Design podcast, I talk to minor league baseball teams, designers, and other super interesting people about what these minor league baseball logos mean. And I talk a little bit about ice cream helmets. What's up, Bucketheads? I'm Anna DiTomaso, and each week on the Baseball Bucket List podcast, I speak with a different fan about their favorite baseball memories, what the game means to them, and what's left to check off on their baseball bucket list. Hey everyone, it's Eric from the great state of Kansas. This is Johnny from the New Orleans Baby Cakes Memorial Museum. And we are the Earn Fun Average Podcast. Where we talk to a variety of guests about their love of baseball and have fun doing it. America, lower your standards. Average is what we do best. This is Patrick. And Corey. Of BaseballMapper.com. And we have made an interactive map to help highlight all baseball teams from the majors down to collegiate summer leagues. We want to bring you closer to baseball. So get on the site and find a team near you today. Hey guys, this is Patrick Larson from the Minor League Baseball Hat History Series. And in every episode, I go through the history of minor league teams through my personal collection of hats. You can find me on Twitter at at PatLarson1. I hope you guys enjoy. Learn more about Curve Brim Media at CurveBrimMedia.com.